go ahead shalin uh, hello everyone welcome to one another session of course in ashi series and today we have a, a very special guest with us dr rosai disuza is a mathematics education uh, education researcher from mumbai who recently completed his phd from umi bhabba center for science education tata institute for fundamental research his phd research looked into the social political economic as well as the philosophical aspects of mathematics education he has a diverse range of work experience in teaching as well as industry thank you so much for joining us today and we are excited for today's session so before we start today's session i request everyone to please have a comfortable seat in order to get best of today's session so now it's time to invite our guest kindly uh, rosa you can uh, take the front seat and begin today's session yeah oh uh, yeah thanks uh, shalini and uh, thank you uh, ct oh, and the college of social sciences for this opportunity to present my work okay so uh, we'll just directly begin with the with the session <laughs> so the title of my session is uh, today the title of our session is uh, open ended mathematics in uh, puzzles and games so before giving an introduction to what this whole thing is about and also about the certain topics which i had spoken about which was mentioned in the abstract like algorithms and proofs and all instead of directly explaining that we'll directly jump into the activities so we'll begin with the with the activity okay so right now what we'll do is we'll just begin with a game all right um so the following thing is, so what i'm uh, what we'll be doing right now is we'll be playing a game it's a two player game so the following is the two player game uh, in which there is player a and player b right so is everyone on board what we can do is this game we can use a chat box also to to play the game and uh, once you get some idea about the game you can probably you know get your friends in a maybe separate uh, you know room to play with your friends or you can do it in groups okay so the following is a two player game it's the name of this game we've called it uh, nim game uh, and for this specific game we can also call it as count up to 100 in steps of 10 that's the name of the game so the following is a two player game player a and player b plays the game um and i'll need a volunteer for this so if anyone can just raise their hands want to play, be a volunteer that would be really nice okay so if anyone would like to play so we'll be playing this game okay so i'll just explain the rules of the game and then we'll dive into it so player a begins by saying out loud a number between 1 and 10 right and player b adds a number between 1 and 10 to player a's number So, for example, in the chat, I will say, supposing I start with number say five, you know, so I can say, uh, player, player A, I'm I'm in the chat right now, says five, says five, okay, that's so it's a number between, uh, yeah, so it's a number between one to ten. Now, player B can add any number between one and ten to five and say the number out loud. So if player B says a number, say um, you know, player B adds you know say six to number five, you get eleven. So player B will just say eleven. Uh, all right. So if anyone wants to volunteer, so first I'll just explain the game, and in the same way now then players uh, A now players A uh, turn to play the game. So now player A can add any number between one to ten uh, to number eleven and say out the number out loud. So player A can say. A can say you know twenty for example after having added nine to the number, then B can say you know say thirty. B can add up to number you know up to ten, and so on. Then A can um, say perhaps you know so the game carries on this in this manner, and uh, whoever says the number hundred wins the game. Okay, uh, did you understand the rules of the game? Um, okay, all right. Okay, I hope everyone understands the rules. So, would anyone like to volunteer to play this game with me? Uh, if any anyone wants to volunteer, just raise your hand or just mention in the chat, and we can play it uh, publicly. Okay. Okay. So, so Mrinal is going to uh, volunteer. She will. She is the one. Anyone else? Uh, actually, what I'll do is uh, let's play with Mrinal only. So I will play with Mrinal this game. Yeah. Let's. So then next, uh, maybe we can. 
Okay, so hi, Brunal. Would you like to begin the game? You can mention in the public. Brunal, can you can you uh, at least uh, switch on your video? It will be really great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And also, we'll have to use the chat, public chat. We'll all have to see the public chat to see how this game is unfolding. Okay. All right. Okay, so Brunal, would you like to begin, or should I begin the game? Uh, you can begin. All right. So I will begin with the number. Uh, number. I'll begin with number say five. No. So now Mrunal's turn. So Mrunal, you'll so now you can add any number between one to ten to number five, which means that you can say out any number. Okay, twelve. Okay, so Mrunal has said twelve. So now I'm saying fifteen. Okay, Mrunal, which number would love to say? Twenty. Okay, so I'm saying thirty. Brunal's turn. Thirty-eight. Okay. Um, I will say, uh, forty-eight. I'll just add ten. Forty-eight. Fifty-seven. Okay. I will add ten and say sixty-seven. Can people try to guess who will win? You can you can try. You can ah, yes. Start okay. to think who will no, win. Will Any bets? Seventy-eight. <laughs> yeah, just you can go in a other room and do your betting. That'll be fun and unethical, but yeah. fun. <laughs> Rossi has high chance of winning because he knows the rules very well. But yeah, so maybe Brunal will have a beginner's game. luck. Yeah. This is obviously a rigged game. Yeah. So. Um, but then I would, uh, but yeah, now if I, I, I rig the game, of course, so I'm going to win this game or am I? <laughs> I think you should wait, Rossi. Yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. see what happens in the first round. Let's see okay. what happens. Okay, Mrinal. Go, uh, Mrinal. No, one, no, you have to add. Okay. So are you adding number one to 89 or starting again? 90, yeah. So yeah. Sir. So I won, you know, uh, uh, okay, so now what exactly happened? Shall we play again? Um, would you? Uh, so I, I'm guessing. Just uh, Rossi. Yeah. Rossi, why don't uh, why don't we try uh, someone else to describe what happened, and then we again play the game so that people are able to look at the numbers that are there on the chat and say some of the observations. All right. Yeah. Huh? Maybe I'll just uh, copy those numbers which was so far written. So it is five. Yeah. So this. Five comma twelve. Then after you 10, can go and see uh, in the yeah. Then hmm. fifteen. People can see on the chat also. So why did what what do you think happened? Why did Rossi win? What was it that made him win? It, was there any possibility that Mrinal could have won? Yes, Ashu. Would you like no, to come in? No. Yeah. Just a strategy being employed that uh, because Rosie uh, is always, uh, I'm sorry, I'm spelling the name correctly. Rossi, Rossi. Rossi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Rossi was uh, smart enough to uh, add the bigger numbers. Uh, but uh, the other Minal was adding the smaller numbers. And so the strategy of uh, adding the bigger numbers and mostly around 10 made him win. Okay. Okay. So that is one hypothesis. One conjecture is because Rossi was um, adding bigger numbers, he won. Okay. Any other person would like to give any uh, any other explanation? Any other the last, last option should have been less than eleven. So yeah, that I think that's very smart. Person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please repeat, Mrinal. I spoke in between. Please repeat. Yeah. No. So that the person has to enter at least a number one, then the Winner will add ten and he will win. So at least mm -hmm. eleven should be the the difference should be there. Okay, so let's see now, Rossi. If we play again, let's see if the tables can be turned. All right. Okay. So would anyone else like to play with me in this game? Would anyone else like to try? Come on, it's just a game. Har jeet to chalti rehti hai. Daniel, come on, you're uh, trying. Daniel, are you going to play with us? Daniel, Jason, 
Are you going to play with us? You have unmuted. Please put on your video also. We would really like that. Anybody else who's also interested in playing this game? Anybody else? Okay, uh, ma'am, can I try? Yeah, of course. Tinu Chaudhary, yes. Uh, yes, uh, I'm facing some uh, technical glitches, so I won't be able to own my video. It's okay. Like, you have to play on the chat. Okay, okay so yeah. Rati, go ahead. Over to you. Okay, so sorry, who, who is, the, uh, I didn't get your name. Who am I playing with? Tinu Chaudhary. Tinu Chaudhary. Okay, Tinu. So, hi, Tinu. So, uh, would you like to begin or shall I, should, you want me to begin? Uh, five. Five? Okay, so you're saying five, no? So, um, okay, you say five. So I am saying, um, okay, I'll say 10. Seventeen, okay. So uh, I'll just say it, um, 20. Thirty, forty, forty-five. 40, 45, okay, uh, 55, um, 65, um, 70, 71, okay, let's say 78. 80. Okay, I'm playing 89. Oh, I think uh, the second last move. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, okay. It. so now we, the game is kind of over now, even though we didn't reach 100. Yeah, you can still assume that the game is over. Yeah. So, okay. So is everyone on board over here? Uh, did everyone notice something? Now, um, the game says that whoever reaches 100 wins, but as soon as I reach 89, uh, it is assumed that the game is over. So, yeah. Okay, so here I think one observation we can make, um, because of lack of time, I'll just uh, say the observation myself, that basically to reach 100, it is enough to reach 89. Is that, um, if I make that claim, so to reach 100, It is enough, I'll just type it out, to reach 89, okay? So I made a statement in the chat box, okay, agree. So now if I change the rules of the game to say that count up to 89 in steps of 10, the game is the same. So now uh, the game has become a little bit easier in a way, you can say. So whoever reaches 89 wins. So now if you play the game again, uh, so how do you think it will... What will be the strategy now? Whoever so reaches kind of reach 78. Yes, was that? Whoever reaches 78, he will win then. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, that's so interesting. So basically, yeah. So uh, to reach 100, it is also, now we can reduce it to say, uh, it is enough to reach uh, 78, right? Now to reach 78, so reach, um, let's say if I make it smaller, but now to reach 78, Uh, it is enough to reach which number? 67. So in the beginning we said, ah, okay, okay, that's a nice, okay. So, um, okay, Bishal Datta has uh, observed a pattern here. Okay, so to reach 100, it is enough to reach 78. And then to reach 78, it's enough to reach 67, then 56, 45, 34, 23, 12, and 1. Thanks, Michal. So, um, okay, so here now we see a particular strategy, right? So if you play the game again, uh, Michal, would you like to play the game now that you've figured out something? So to convince maybe the other participants. Yes, like go, Michal. Rasiko Harado. Right. So, Michal, are you starting or should I start? <laughs> Come on. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. One. So uh, I will say ten. Twelve. Okay. Twenty. Twenty-three. Ah. Uh, thirty-three. Ah. Uh, okay. Thirty-three. I added ten and got thirty-three. Thirty-four. Ah. Uh, okay. Forty. Forty-five. Okay. Ah. Uh, Fifty-five. Okay, I hope everyone else is observing what uh, uh, Vishal is doing right now. Yeah, he is following the pattern, I think. Yeah, so basically, it seems that the uh, Vishal has predicted which all numbers to type. So, irrespective of whatever numbers I type, Vishal can type the same the numbers already pre-decided. Okay, so I think the game is becoming predictable is now. Is it? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Is who is going to win? All right. Okay. The game is not over. Okay. Any any predictions? Ah. Anybody can unmute and predict who is who will win. Okay. Um. Now we have two people who both know the rules of the who both know the rule of the game, the how to cheat in this game. Ah. Uh, but still, this can be only seems to be just one winner now. Or oh, let's see. There has to be only one winner. And this is taking some time to think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ninety and eighty-nine. Eighty-nine, ninety. Yeah. 100. Yes. 100. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So yes, uh, Vishal. Go for yeah, Vishal. Vishal has won this game now. Uh, okay. So A big okay, round so of I, applause. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, I think we got a sense of this game about how to play. Now, I, what I'll do is I will uh, change the rules of the game. Oh. Okay, now to eighteen steps of five. Right. So the game will be very very similar. Now, what do you think will be the the pattern? so anyone okay so now this is the uh, the the rules of the game have changed but just some technical rules have changed so now we have a two player game a and b but now you uh, begin by saying out aloud any number between 1 and 5 and then player b adds again a number between 1 and 5 and says out the number aloud calls out the result player a adds another number between 1 and 5 to player b's result and calls out the result and the game continues in this manner with player a and player b adding numbers between 1 and 5 to their opponents and whichever player calls out number 80 wins okay ah uh -huh. first first of find out the hack and then play ah uh, okay so what will be the hack okay so we need to find out the hack so how will you find out the hack or rather how will you maybe model the game Okay, so seventy-four is the last six. number. Ah, uh, is it so? Okay, so if six I if seven. someone says seventy-four and then you add another number up to seventy, okay, up to seventy-nine, and then okay, so let's start with so with we can start with eighty, then it goes down to seventy-four, then after that it goes down to. So what will be the next number in the series? And of course, and finally we'll have to invert it. Uh, Sixty-six. Yes, Pranal, you were going to say sixty-nine. Okay, so uh, difference 70... of six would be there. Yeah. Difference of six would be there. Okay. Ah, so I think that would it, would it be sixty-nine. Okay, let's see. Uh, if you say sixty-nine, well then I can add five and say seventy-four, and then ah uh, sixty-nine would be losing. I think sixty-nine won't work. It should be sixty-sixty-six. No, sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Sorry, sixty-eight. Okay, Mrinal says sixty-eight. Sprithi Puri says sixty-seven. Rossi. Ah, yeah. So, 
Give the nearest number two less than a multiple of six. Give the nearest number. Uh, okay, seventy-two. Okay, the okay. There are a lot of interesting responses coming. Okay. Um, okay. So Vishal has found a pattern. Give the nearest number two less than a multiple of six. Okay. Okay, that's an interesting. Okay, that's an interesting observation. So now there's some algebra happening here. Uh, okay. 68 minus six, that would be 62, I'm guessing. Okay. So, okay, so we have, so the pattern will be, okay, to reach 80, we'll, it, is, it suffices to reach 74. To reach 74 suffices to reach 68. Ah, okay. Okay, Mindanal has got, found, has managed to hack the, the, the game, 56, then I would say it is 50, then 44, and then after that, um so it is so okay start with two okay so let's see okay so 44 uh 44 minus 6 is how much 38 right 44 minus 6 is 38 minus 6 is 32 minus 6 is how much uh 32 minus 6 uh what is 32 minus 6 20 26 then 20 then um 14 14 minus six is eight minus six is two. Okay. Huh. So, okay. So now we have, we have a particular hack. You start with number two and um, then irrespective of what the opponent says, you say eight, because when you say two, you start with number two, the opponent can say, okay. Huh. Oh yes, that is also, okay. Yeah, so Dr. Harsha Merchant says, good game like this reverse can also be played where we have to go on subtracting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Maybe you can uh, work out in a, you can try to do it with a friend. Who reaches zero first, starting Where from any number. Zero? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, would it be the no. same game? Anyway. Uh, may I say something? May, may I say something? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, actually, if, if everyone knows the pattern, whoever wins the toss wins the match. That means whoever starts, he, he, he or she wins. Okay, so there's one. Uh, okay, so um, one observation is that okay, if I say this statement that um, okay, if you if if you find out the hack, then whoever begins wins the game. Uh, is this true? Okay, so I wrote a, a question in the in the in the chat. If you find out the hack, whoever begins wins the game. Is this true? Okay, so uh, I just so what do you all think? Do you all think that it is? Oh, Smriti Suri says no. Okay. What about say? others? They can. Uh, there is a reaction uh, button that you have on the lower bar. If you have joined from laptop or from uh, phone, you can say yes or no. There is a right mark for which you can say yes. There is a uh, cross mark for uh, which can indicate your no. So that we have a sense of what everyone thinks. Can everyone please respond on that or on chat so that we have a sense of what general in general people are thinking about it? Thank you. People have started responding on chat. Let me also check if they have. Yeah, so uh, right now I see one uh, saying yes in the uh, reactions. Two are saying yes and four are saying no in the reactions. See, it is good to articulate what you are thinking at that point because uh, whatever happens after that, that you will be more engaged, you will be more attuned to understanding whatever is happening. So please, uh, do uh, show your uh, reaction there, whether it is a yes or a no. Okay, so I I've got three yes and four no. Yeah. Huh. Rossi has reposted the question. So if you know the hack, if you know the pattern, whoever win, whoever begins will win the game. Is this true? So I'm seeing a lot of yeses in the chat. And in reactions, there are three yes and five no. So it seems like uh, 
<clears throat> a divided uh, opinion right now. And we okay, will so go, now we'll go start... back to Rossi to clarify. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll say one last game uh, of this time. So we'll count up to say 99 in steps of of 10. Okay. Count up to 99 in steps of 10. So um, now you can work out a hack and whoever says that it is, you know, that the game is determined and whoever begins spins can try playing this game with me and start playing. Count up Who to wants to play? Who wants now to play with so Rossi? And I would want someone who has voted yes, because uh, this would indicate that yeah. uh, whoever starts wins. And if you figure out the hack, that means you can say with certainty that you will be able to defeat me in this game. Yes, but uh, we can't use zero, right? Ah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's the <laughs> so, main observation. You can't again, you will be winning the game. Yeah. Oh, hi, Ishan. Hi, Ishan. Okay, so I think uh, one observation has been made. Okay, so who, would anyone like to play this game with me now? 99 in steps of 10. Come on, let's so, yeah. have a volunteer. Mm. Anyone, I think, anyone? Yeah. I think the participants are working out a hack and trying to- uh, Yeah, yeah, they are, are trying to find out. Thing. Before before yeah. they volunteer, they are themselves trying to check it. <laughs> yeah. But you will win any in any case. Will I? If the volunteer okay. has to start first. Come on, come on, somebody volunteer. Please, can we request someone to volunteer? Any of the students at least? You want to, do you understand the question? You need to understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Otherwise, Ishan here is like very eager to play. But I'm okay, not sure if he has say. understood the question. Any he just heard the no. game. Yeah. I, I read this slide, don't worry. It's not that. Just wait. Okay, so those who have voted, who have said no, can you explain in some way um, why it is no? Okay. Can it be play? Yeah. Okay, whoever voted no, can, ex can they explain why? Uh, because it's uh, the number you have to told about, uh, like when we have to end at 80. So there are total 14 uh, numbers. So it's an even number. So if A starts, then we will end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That way. So because you can't begin with zero. Ah. Okay. So here, um, okay. I'll just try to work out the hat. To, so I can say that to reach. Um, reach 99, uh, it is, it suffices to reach 88, you know? So the pattern will be 99 comma uh, 88, then uh, 77, then 66, 55, 44, 33, 22, 11. Um, okay. So yeah, so effectively, basically, if you need to win, you will have to go with 99, 88, 77, 66, 55. Uh, and conversely, so to begin, now you cannot begin with 11, you'll have to begin with numbers from one to 10. So now whoever begins as any number between one to 10, the next person says 11, 22, 33, and then reaches 99 and wins the game. Uh, multiples of nine add two. Multiples of nine add two. Uh, is, this, is this a case? Okay. Um, Multiple, let's, let's check, okay, uh, 20, okay. So multiple, so, so nine, one's a nine plus two is 11, nine plus 18 plus two is 22, uh, that's 20, sorry. Uh, nine into two plus two uh, is equal to 20. Um, okay, multiples of 11. So in this case is multiples of 11. Okay, so um, anyway, I want you to think about this game and then, um, now what I'll do is I'll try to maybe make it generalize. 
Okay, so now the step size n and target number m is variable. So, so we figure out some sort of a pattern over here, right? So now I want you all to try to, you know, come up with some sort of a model, the solution, basically come up with an equation. So can you think about an equation? Okay, so here, um, yeah, so in the case of 99, uh, reaching 99 steps of 10, the person who starts will, will lose, will fail, right? Okay, so, okay, that's a good observation. So like when you have um, 100, so when, okay, so I will generalize this game by saying that we need to count up to M in steps of N, all right? I hope I'm not making, I'm not confusing by using, um, by introducing, you know, letters of the alphabet into maths. Uh, I hope that's fine. Okay, so in the beginning when M was equal to 100 and um, N equal 10, and whoever started one. But if, if M equals 99, ah, all right. Okay, so Tinu Chaudhary has found a, a, a pattern saying that, ah, so yeah, you have a pattern. You can model it by saying 100 minus 11 X, where X goes from one to nine. Okay, so okay, so 100 minus 99. Oh, okay, okay. So, Okay, this is a nice, uh, so, okay, Tino has managed to model the problem. So this is a nice equation for solving this problem by saying that the solution can be modeled as, modeled as, um, you know, 100 X, 100 minus 11 X, where X goes from one to two comma, up to nine. Huh. But here also, now, so, okay, but now how do you know where to stop it, okay? Uh, why do we stop at nine? Well, okay, we can understand that if we go beyond nine, then the number becomes negative. So maybe we can modify this particular uh, algorithm uh, by saying, yeah, hmm. so X up to, how do you decide the number nine? Here are the number nine you've picked out, but uh, if you have to, you know, if you have to write a, say an algorithm to solve this, like, you know, why, why are we stopping at nine? Uh, so we can say that, uh, okay. Yeah, so we can maybe say that if, uh, if, if 10 X, or we can say if, if 11 X uh, is greater than hundred. Okay, or we can say, while 11 X, 11 X is lesser than hundred comma um, compute. Ah, okay, um, I, I'll just work this out. Compute hundred minus, minus 11 X, okay. Uh, and then, uh, okay, we can say start with, X equal to one, then X by one. Okay, huh. okay, so now uh, to respond to, um, okay, now, okay, now Tino says 100 minus 11 X where X equal to one to nine. Okay, Mineral says M minus N plus one times X, X goes from one to N minus one. Okay, this is a lovely model, okay to solve this, okay? Okay, so here, uh, this is one particular model, but we'll have to think about how to generate the numbers because it could be possible that the opponent is, you know, giving the right numbers by coincidence. Uh, but anyway, so as of now, it, also, it's a, it was very interesting to see uh, two different, uh, okay, one, two different algorithms or two different models. Of course, models and algorithms are different, but we'll think about why that's the case. Uh, okay, Tino's uh, model shows that it is specific to 10 in steps of, um, uh, in step, uh, 100 in steps of 10. But of course, that could be abstracted further. And Mrinal has done that by saying M minus N plus one times X, where X goes from one to N minus one, okay? So I want you all to think about this. And maybe if you all um, are a little bit tired of this, you all could go into a breakout room and try to play this game with your friends and see if you all can win. 
I will move on to another game. Um, okay, it's a puzzle. Okay, so now the following. Okay, so now we will um, keep that game at the side. I hope you all had fun. But now we'll move on to a particular puzzle. Okay, so I will share a puzzle over here, which was uh, developed by by a puzzle that I had seen in a different book. So here is a puzzle, but anyway, this is a little bit complicated to understand on the spot. So a circle is divided into six sectors and a pawn, a counter, stands in each of them. It is allowed to shift any two pawns to sectors bordering the, uh, those they stand on at the moment. Is it possible to gather all pawns in one sector using such operations? Okay, I am sharing this particular slide because to for you know because I'm giving the referencing, but we don't have to look specifically into understanding this model per se. I will explain this problem in terms of how we have generalized it. So I'm going to change the slide. This particular slide is only to give references. Okay, okay. So now this is our game. A circle is divided into equal number of sectors as shown. There is a button in each part of the circle. The task of the puzzle is to bring all buttons in one sector, but there are some rules of the game. Okay, is everyone on board so far? All right. Um, okay. Okay. So the rules of the game is that in one step, a button can shift to its adjacent sector, and you need to make two steps to complete a move. Two steps to complete a move. Uh, okay. There's a typo here. Uh, I say you need to make two moves, but two steps to complete a move. Can you move all? Buttons in one sector in whole moves. In other words, can you move all buttons into a given sector in an even number of steps? So to clarify this, I will uh, show you the next slide. Okay. So for example, consider a circle divided into five sectors. Okay. So now you have a button in each sector. So recall in one step, a button can shift only to its adjacent sector. You need to make two steps to complete each move. So right now, when I make one step, the puzzle could look as follows. This is the status of the puzzle after one step. Now, uh, I make another step, and uh, uh, one move has been completed. Okay, I hope everyone's on board. After three steps, the puzzle could look like the following. Since three steps, uh, since two steps equals one completed move. The figure looks so shows the status after one move and one step. Now you have another move, uh, sorry, another step which has completed two, which indicates that two moves have been completed. Uh, now you have two moves and a step, and now this is the status of the puzzle after three moves, and the puzzle is solved. After playing such a complicated game, I show such a easy game, uh, and you anyway. know. So now, anyway. I hope you've understood what exactly happened here, even though there's not much to understand. So I will move on to another example. Let's take an example of a circle divided into four sectors. Again, recall that in one step, a button can move only to its adjacent sector, and you need to make two steps to complete a move. Right? So it's a puzzle with four sectors. So after one step, the button moves, say, you know, clockwise. And another step, which completes a move, Another button moves anti-clockwise, and the move is completed. Another move is another step is made, which means this is uh, and then and another step is made, and in two moves the puzzle is solved. Again, it's a very easy uh, solution of problem. So for number five, so okay, so let's recall how we played this puzzle for a circle divided into four sectors, and also with a circle that was divided into five sectors. Now let us denote the number of sectors as n. Now let us try for n equal to six. Okay, huh. so after one step, I'm trying this. After one step, this is the status of the puzzle. Uh, now we have one move, another step, so total three steps, and four steps, which indicates two completed moves. Now this is five steps, which is two moves and a step, and three moves, which means six number six steps, seven steps. Um, sorry, this is yeah, seven steps, which means three moves and one step. Four moves, eight steps in all. So now I have four steps and one move. Okay, so this is the status of the puzzle after four moves and one step, which is nine steps in all. But the puzzle has not yet been solved because the game requires that a whole number of steps be completed. That means an even number. So a move may be regarded as half a step, or maybe a step. Sorry, can be regarded as half a move. So another uh, step is needed to complete the move. So this is the status after five completed moves, right? So now, after five moves, the now I make five moves on a step, 
six moves, six moves on a step, seven moves, uh, seven moves on a step. I need to make another one to make eight moves, nine steps, 10, um, so, uh, so basically nine moves. Uh, so now after 10 moves, you know, it's getting very messy. Okay, so it seems like um, that this is taking too long. We could start again, or perhaps we could try independently on small groups. So this is the status of the puzzle after 10 moves, but of course it could be that my approach was a little bit messy. I might not have worked out the hack because of which I reached into a very messy situation after 10 moves and I would have to start again. Okay, so as of now, has everyone understood the game? Uh, has understood the puzzle? Okay, so anyway, to do that, we will uh, recall what we did so far. We started out with a circle divided into five sectors and easily solved it. We then tried out the same puzzle for n equal to four and solved it rather easily. For n equal to six, we have trouble solving it. Okay, so is it just me who's having trouble solving it or do you think anybody else solving this will have trouble solving it? Uh, so what we can do is, um, okay, so now uh, I have another, I have like a, I try to use a word to draw a circle with some buttons in it, but anyone like to try to solve this puzzle for say uh, a number, circle is divided into six sectors. Yes, yes. Um, Yeah, so the circle is divided into six sectors. So, so anyway, so in the beginning, the circle was divided into four sectors and we could solve it easily. Then we tried for a circle divided into five sectors and that could be solved also easily. Actually, we started first with five, then with four, and then we went to six, but we could have gone the other way around as well. So we have a circle, but now for six, all of a sudden, something seems to be going wrong or, or is it? But anyone like to solve it, what I'll do is I will change the screen maybe and see whether I can, uh, I can, oops. Or oh, did I, did I log out? Oh no, okay, I'm still here. Okay, screen has uh, shared, okay. I will share a different screen. I hope that works. Uh, uh, just reshare the screen. I think something happened. Yeah, yeah I, I pressed. Um, I think you pressed stop share or something. Just reshare the screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, just a minute. It's okay. Anybody has questions on what he was doing? Any questions? Or any comment? Or any observation that you have made? So in the case of six sector this mm -hmm. will never be complete you will require four and a half you start it anyway okay because okay. The button, is the exactly opposite sector it will require one and a half more okay so thank you thank you for sharing if anybody else also has any observation please do share it yeah over to you okay, this is an interesting observation um so yeah, so basically if you choose one sector into which everything, if all the buttons are supposed to reach, then the uh, the sector diametrically opposite, I can say, uh, needs uh, no, one and a half or maybe a non-whole number, number moves to reach, reach the target. I'm just, uh, is this the point you are making? So uh, the sector diametrically opposite needs non whole number moves to reach the target. So when, okay, when you have an odd number, then there is no diametrically opposite because uh, if you choose one target, what remains is an even number of sectors. So I think then you can solve it with, uh, with number four, diametrically opposite can be moved into even number of steps, which means you can solve. Is this the argument you, are you making? Uh, Sorry, who's, uh, I didn't get the name of who uh, spoke just now. Yes, but again, if eight sectors are there, uh, this ah. will be possible to solve. With eight, it will be possible. Okay, I I have, uh, I have just drawn, okay, so what, we can try this out. I will just stop screen sharing for a bit and 
change the screen may i say one observation yeah, yeah, sure. uh uh two um, equivalenting two step equal to one move right sir two ah, step yeah, equal yeah. to one move um mm, so 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 this is equivalent to just move two balls at once so this will be one move one step you will be one more provided you move two balls together so if you see together you can move two balls mm, there are two pairs you can see and two there are two who are apart so mm, you can move those two together and reach at the same position so mm, there will be a mess and i think this can be solved okay okay so one method of solving it would be you move two balls or two uh, together so yeah. i made the equivalence that move two balls together okay so it is equivalent to moving two balls together okay. yes sir so if we move two balls together then um, then we will have one move uh, and since we can't um, make the third pair to move together and so this can't be solved this is my observation is there any nato issue uh yeah i'm just thinking about it so okay i'll just think this aloud so that others can also um have a look i'll just share it on a, a chat so i will just write this down ki um agar uh, so two steps for a move is equivalent to moving to say buttons you can say together or together or at a time okay so this is the uh, okay so uh, two steps for a move is equivalent to moving two buttons together at a time um however see the so you can also move uh, one button two times that will also counts as uh, moving two but that also counts as making a completed move no uh, yes sir but uh, the process i say that um, okay. you can move one button two times and you can if you can move one button two times and also in, then also you can't uh, make two balls in two balls a pair so since these are these extras are in the adjacent sides so this can be done because this is mm, yes this can be done okay Okay. provided if, if this was odd then maybe it this was possible if the number of sectors was odd then this should be possible ah uh, okay okay yeah i think i understood because if it is odd then you can move two at a time uh you can move in pairs you can move in pairs i think yeah that's an interesting observation so if if there are odd numbers if there's i hope i'm i'm not misunderstanding if there's an odd uh If there's an odd number of say buttons or sectors of uh, buttons, then uh, then we can move in pairs. Uh, move we can move them in pairs. Uh, okay, so I said about case. odd number of sectors. Yeah. yeah okay. Sectors. Yeah. Uh, if there are odd number, of, I'll just uh, I'm typing it out. That's why it's not visible so far until I finish. Uh, okay. If there's an odd number of sectors, we can move them in pairs. Thus. a uh, solution always exists if if n is odd okay this is a interesting observation i uh, i mean it's not just interesting it is pretty much i again didn't say that i again didn't say that with oh, oh, sorry, provided sorry. with this diagram provided yeah. with this diagram if we had if we had one more column one more sector then um, this should we 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 could have done that we could have solved this that means out of this three in place of these three sectors if we had four sectors this yeah. empty sectors adjacently this um, where there are no any balls so then this could have been done but now this cannot be done okay so at the current... i am not giving any theorem oh sorry okay okay yeah yeah i know yeah uh, yeah but i was trying to uh, sorry pose a theorem uh, yeah my bad um uh, okay so in this particular case when there is uh, 
three empty sectors, but if there were four, then it could have been done. Okay, okay so since we're running a little bit short of time, I'll just move on, uh, but you can note down this particular puzzle and try to work it out. Uh, because I want to leave this a little bit open-ended to try to develop uh, a proof or a lot of, uh, okay, although, so not make any uh, theorem, but a lot of theorems can be, you know, observed over here. So let's see. Okay. So anyway, uh, I will just move on to the next slide for now. I'm just moving on ahead because uh, it's a little short of time. So if we try solving the puzzle for different values of N, uh, note down the number of steps required to solve and also we can say, do you observe any pattern in the second column? So if you change the number of sectors, so here I've shared from three to nine, but if you look at from number say two onwards, imagine you have a uh, circle divided into two parts, a button is in each part. Now you are supposed to make two uh, moves, uh, two steps to complete a move. Now in one step, the it seems like the puzzle will be solved, but you'll have to make another step to complete it. So you have a button goes in the other column and then comes back and it's unsolved again. So perhaps with if the number of sectors is two, then you cannot solve it. Anyway, I'll just read out what's here. Okay, so now, um, so if you try to work this out, I think you might observe a particular pattern. Right? So number of parts, if it is broken into two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it, so I had done this once with some teachers and someone, and uh, it was observed that the number of parts when the circle is divided into two parts, six parts or 10 parts, it cannot be solved, but for other numbers, it can be solved. And then some teachers have pointed out that, um, that these numbers like two, six, 10, they follow an arithmetic progression. Um, okay, so it was claimed that a puzzle cannot be solved for values of N that follow an arithmetic progression with common difference four. But of course, then the question comes, how did you arrive at this? Can this be proven? Also, can you prove that for numbers three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, eleven, 11, a solution strictly exists? Okay, so um, Rinal says if N is number of sectors and N equal to 2M I, or, and M is odd, then not possible to get complete moves. Okay, if N number of sectors N is equal to M and, and okay. So if N, so M is odd and N is equal to two, then it is not possible. Okay, this is, uh, oh yeah. So this is a nice way of uh, summarizing these parts. So numbers like two, six, 10 can be written as two M where M is odd. So if I say it in other words, if I divide, uh, n by two, I get an odd number. However, like numbers like eight, if I divide eight by two, I get number four, which is actually an even number, right? So for these numbers, if numbers whose half is odd, a solution does not exist. So this is a nice pattern. However, uh, this is not really a proof, right? This is not, but it is a major step towards getting towards a proof, but it is not quite a proof perhaps. You can think about that. Okay, so the proof, okay, so now uh, there are two aspects to this uh, particular puzzle, which I would want to share. Uh, one aspect is that, okay, for certain numbers as uh, like, for if numbers are odd, I can, okay, I will just add to Mrunal's comment in the chat and I'll say if N is odd, so I can say, okay, for the other cases, if N is odd, uh, then a solution, Definite, definitely exists, okay? And if N is uh, divisible by four, a solution definite exists. I have written this in the chat. I hope the chat is open. Uh, so if n is odd, a solution definitely exists. And if n is divisible by four, a solution definitely exists. And then this is to add to Mrunal's uh, observation that if n is, uh, okay, you can say if n is even, but I'll just say it in other words, if n is even, but uh, n divided by two is odd, then it is not possible to get complete moves. Uh, and this probably, okay, so I'll just say if, if, but if n, n is even, that is, uh, and not uh, visible by say four, because uh, then, then no solution, solution uh, then, okay. So this is one way of, uh, okay. So what I'll do is now I have three cases over here. If 
I hope the chat is visible. If n is odd, a solution definitely exists. If n is divisible by four, a solution definitely exists. If n is even and not divisible by four, then no solution can exist. This is one observation. It could be a hypothesis. Now, can we prove this? Uh, for, I'm sure that if you try it out, a lot of proofs, you might be able to come up with a lot of observations if not a direct proof as such, but a lot of steps that might arrive at a proof or a lot of steps that are mathematical in themselves that need not have to specifically solve this problem, okay? So the proof is that the number of parts n of a divided circle can be even or odd. If n is even, it can either be divisible by four or not divisible by four, right? Therefore, n is either one, uh, one odd or it is even but not divisible by four or it is divisible by four, okay? So, so now is there any other, is any other n possible? That means, does this capture all natural numbers if I were to ask? Right. Okay, I think this one does capture all because either they're even or they're odd. So, and if they are even, then they're either divisible by four or not divisible by four. So this kind of captures all uh, number, all natural numbers. So now let's take a proof, okay, of if now to prove, now we'll have to prove that a solution will always exist, but I think, uh, I think this has already been established uh, in some of the discussions that came about. So, but anyway, for completeness sake, I'll present this proof. So if N is odd, what you do is you pick one sector as a target sector. So in the case of the diagram here, I have a circle divided into five sectors and I have uh, five buttons, two buttons, purple, two green, and one uh, button is uh, black. And that black button I have selected as the target sector. Now, since N is odd, for every remaining button, there'll be a corresponding mirror image, uh, button as this mirror image. So here for every button of a color, there's a button of another of the same color, which is this mirror image. And as was pointed out, you can always move in pairs, you know, to complete a move. So therefore for each button that steps one sector closer to a target, a corresponding button can step in the same manner thereby completing a move. So, uh, so in this case, you can move two buttons at a time which indicates that you are making complete moves at a time. And for, so basically a solution, if N is odd, a solution always exists. Although this is an example of five, but we can think that this generalizes for all odd numbers. Um, if N is divisible by four, okay, we'll take the case of eight. Okay, again, pick one sector as a target sector, say the sector with the purple button. And other than the button diametrically opposite, which is the blue button, for example. So you have the purple button in the bottom uh, right corner and the top left corner, you have this blue button. Uh, all the buttons can have a mirror image button. So in that regard, we can move and apply the same algorithm. Yeah, so you move two buttons at a time and you can always get, you can always solve it. However, one button remains, but now this button, I can move it now, since we're left with one button, since N is divisible by four, the button can reach the target in an even number of steps. So for example, here, it moves in one step, two, three, and four. So now this is the status of the game after eight moves. So the move, so here we have, is, I just, okay. So here we have the, that if N is divisible by four, a solution always exists. However, now if N is even, but not divisible by four, then the, so far the solution algorithms which we use will no longer apply over here. However, this is not a proof. Just because our algorithms don't work, doesn't mean that this is a proof. To prove that a solution to the puzzle cannot exist, a different approach is needed. And this is the approach which uh, you know we've just developed. So our proof is that, okay, assign a number zero and one to every alternate sector. Since N is even, this is possible, okay? So for example, if N was odd, then there would be two adjacent sectors with the same number. I hope this is clear. This is uh, evident, okay? So now what we'll do is we'll invent a concept called value in this context, uh, in this particular context. Uh, we'll say define value as of a button as a number of the sector of the button. So right now you, you, have, uh, you have six buttons in six different sectors, numbered one or zero. And, um, oh, it's already four o'clock, okay. So therefore, okay. So now therefore the value, now with every step a uh, button moves, from at the start of the puzzle with n equal to six, each sector has one button each. Three buttons are in sectors assigned one and three are in sectors assigned zero, okay? Therefore, to begin with, the sum is equal to three. 
Okay, this is some of the value. Okay, so now with um, after one step, a button st steps either from zero to one or one to zero respectively. Therefore, after one move, the sum changes to either four or changes to two. This is after one uh, one step actually, not one move. Okay, so now after one step, the sum has changed to four. Now after another step, it has gone back to three. It's become four. Now it's become five. This after completing two moves. Uh, but observe that after completing a move, the sum, so with every move, consequently with the second corresponding step, the parity, whether it is odd or even, reverts back to the origin, which one, in this case, it is odd, or maybe it's always odd. Okay, uh, so one, three, five are the same parity, odd, two, four, six have the parity even, zero, two, four, six have the parity even. So therefore, with every move, that means with every steps of two, the parity remains unchanged, remains unvariant, and unchanged. I hope this is clear. When we begin the puzzle, since the parity, the parity is odd, since n is equal to three at the beginning, because when you divide n by two, you have an odd number. And as uh, Mirunal had pointed out, if n is the number of sectors and n is equal to two m, where m is odd, then it's not possible to get complete moves. So here we begin, if you kind of model it in this way by assigning values to a button, then we see that if, um, if, if n is uh, even, but not divisible by four, which means n can be written as two m where m is odd, then it is not possible to get complete moves. However, if a solution to the puzzle exists, all the buttons will end up in a sector assigned one or zero. Is this clear? Okay. Uh, so now, okay. In other words, a game begins with sum being n by two, uh, which is odd. In this case, n by two is three. Furthermore, with each step, the parity remains the same. That is odd. However, for a solution to exist, the parity needs to change to zero or n. In this case, n is equal to six, which are even numbers. Therefore, a solution cannot exist. Okay, so I'll just summarize the proof. If n is even but not divisible by four, the sum at the start is n by two, which is an odd number. In each jump, a button moves from one to zero or zero to one. Each jump changes the sum from an odd to an even or an even to an odd number. Since we make two jumps at a time or two steps at a time, the sum will always remain odd. But if all buttons should be should end on the same part, the sum should be n or zero, both of which are even. Okay. Okay, I hope this is clear. I will move on to the next slide. Okay, so, but over years, there are some assumptions we made. We began with the example of a circle divided into five parts. We can think, is a circle a proper representative for any ordered number? Similarly, when we explode a circle divided into eight sectors and then six, can we say that those circles properly represented all the remaining possible circles? And um, another one question that arises, if an algorithm cannot solve a puzzle, does that mean that a puzzle is unsolvable? And uh, maybe I'll just, and if a puzzle is solvable, can we be sure that an algorithm exists that will solve it? So with these questions, I will end my uh, presentation. Um, thank you. Okay, so we can have some questions. If if we have time, I I, I believe I have shot up by oh, five, five minutes already. Um, no, I think it's okay if we have, uh, we can definitely take one or two questions if they are there. Uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Any questions from teachers, from students, how you can use these kind of games uh, in uh, classroom uh, situations? What kind of uh, uh, thinking strategies, what kind of learning strategies students can develop by using these kind of uh, games? It definitely involves mathematical thinking, but what kind of mathematical thinking is something that you have to think through and uh, you have to see uh, how uh, that can be encouraged in the classroom. We can uh, play the game and we can tell the algorithm, but uh, wouldn't it be really nice if uh, we can also ask students to observe the pattern and to come up with uh, ways to represent the pattern itself? So this is something that I was thinking about. What do you think, Rossi, about that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that is um, also on the lines I was thinking. But uh, what I was also trying to think for myself and actually do for myself was actually try to uh, try to write a computer program. I actually just started uh, working on this um, uh, yesterday mm -hmm. only. So um, mm -hmm. and it's been a while since I did programming. So I was thinking, yeah. write a computer program that plays this game with you. And okay, also, that will be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. because 
these days like uh, there's a you know you know digitalization and programming ha huh. yeah play a game and ask kids to find a winning strategy hmm. yeah so here yeah this is one point so we can find the game to find a winning strategy but also i was thinking on the lines that uh, that you know the concept of algorithms is seen as a very yeah. difficult uh, a very very complicated task but i feel that you know we just end up developing algorithmic thinking when we want to communicate some ideas especially yes. in such context and within that algorithmic thinking i felt that there is also a very inherent aspect of identifying pattern and modeling the situation so these two things if you are able to grasp i think uh, that really helps you in uh, uh, these uh, domains of mathematics like algebra you know mm -hmm. because that also you saw that many people were able to express the pattern in algebraic form and uh, it uh, that really helps you to understand what that x stands for and how you can represent a certain pattern using algebraic form so uh, there are uh, since rossi you were already saying that you were thinking of making a computer program uh, yesterday only i was discussing with a few students of how you know the these logo or uh, computer programming based approach is being used to uh, teach students algebra because uh, that computer programming if you have to do you have to generalize you have to abstract what is happening there you should be able to represent that uh, succinctly and use that in the pro program so uh, i mean that could perhaps be a, a new approach for uh, i mean uh, perhaps teaching mathematics and since coding nowadays is um, uh, becoming a trend among students and they are uh, so much into uh, computers all the time maybe they can also uh, try this uh, hand at this kind of thing where they try to code for uh, such kind of games uh, what do you think yeah yeah I, i do agree with you i was just thinking uh, although i was thinking on like you know it depends on what um, age group is it uh, the student or what not just age group but also whether if someone is comfortable with algebra for example does that mean that they will not find this uh, you know activities fun or you know engaging so yeah so there is multiple various le layers of uh, abstraction that's happening here so on one level okay you play the game you observe you have some sort of a intuition about solving the problem then you observe a pattern then you model it in terms of an algebraic equation and then you go maybe one step further you know try to write uh, some sort of an algorithm now algorithm need not always end with a computer program i mean because algorithm itself is a interesting um, because it's an interesting concept in mathematics because uh, for example when i had done this with other teachers another a different kind of algorithm algorithm had come up so for example i'll just take a minute uh, so one of the teachers observed that uh, solution can always exist uh, if for example you no know, imagine at on the circle imagine you have like say a clock you know uh, so a clock has 12 numbers so on each number you have say a button over there now we'll follow this a uh, different algorithm we'll follow an algorithm meaning that every button moves one step in a clockwise direction now if you do this so you move that until it reaches the target which is number on number 12 so number 11 so the button on number 11 will require one step to move to number 12 button on number 10 will require two steps to move to number 12 and this in this way you know all the buttons if you follow this particular algorithm then you can get all the buttons into number 12 which but the total number of steps will be 1 plus 2 because one from 11 2 Plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven, plus eight, plus nine, plus ten, plus eleven. So if you, so this teacher has uh, had hypothesized that if uh, an algorithm, you know, if the number is, you know, if the number from the, the summation from one to n minus one, if that is even, because finally it has to be in even numbers, then a solution always exists. And if not, then it is not possible. However. uh this was an interesting algorithm but there was a particular there were various two problems with it one was it was very inefficient algorithm because see, i used a particular algorithm and didn't realize as is probably the most efficient algorithm but you can have various other algorithms to solve the same puzzle i hope i'm making sense over here so here i made like a mirror image but it could be that instead of moving clockwise anti clockwise you could make everything move clockwise 
and you know and see whether that solves it so here uh, in yeah so to in for school uh, students yeah i mean pattern recognition this is a, this game i found it very interesting because uh, i mean a modification and uh, was we found very interesting with students because uh, young students would solve it by finding patterns you know the older students would use algebra and also try to find out proofs and then later on also this concept of algorithm and then converting it into a computer program which is uh, which is a interesting step but maybe not necessary but we can also explore the various algorithms that can be used to solve puzzles and also some uh, one uh, one particular philosophical question that came to mind if a puzzle is solvable can we be sure an algorithm exists that will solve it of course this kind of goes in the the realm of the theoretical computer science but it is yeah. still a uh, question worth pondering over yeah i definitely i and i think we should look forward to more and more questions by ourselves our students also encourage them so yeah. thank you this has been very very interesting uh, session for us we really enjoyed playing the game and uh, yeah so shalini has shared a feedback form uh, please i request everyone to uh, please share your feedback and when you submit the feedback you will be able to uh get your uh, uh certificate for attending this uh, session i also request all of you to just put on your videos for just one minute so that we can take a, a photo with all of you together I if you can put on your photos for just one minute i understand that we don't request throughout the session because i understand people have issues in network but just for a few minutes if you can put it on we will be able to take a yeah thank you so much uh, just one minute yeah i'm taking a photo oh, it's really nice to see so many uh, people so many known people as well <laughs> yeah okay done and just give me one more minute yes so it's nice to connect with all the faces also yeah thank you so much for attending this uh, please do fill the feedback form and uh, we are waiting here for you in case you face any problems with the feedback form and uh, we'll see you again next week with another session on uh, school synergy teachers forum we will announce it on our telegram group by wednesday at most this time i know we got very late uh, but uh, we look forward to uh, you coming again and again um, on these uh, synergy workshops so that we all can benefit from uh, sharing uh, our ideas and building on our ideas we hope that uh, going forward you will uh, start sharing your own ideas more and more on this forum yeah thank you all for the session uh, shalini please uh, give a vote of thanks for rossi yeah yeah thank you so much for uh, you know joining us today rossi and yes all the participants for all your participation during this session uh, an important point which i wanted to mention where you can uh, share your suggestion like on what topic you need uh, other sessions in feedback form and definitely we will try if we could uh, possible uh, on those topic any session and uh, yes thank you so much everyone Yeah, thank you Salini and thanks thanks everyone for the yeah. attending and participating. Okay. Uh bye. Uh we were not ending the uh meeting yet but we are putting off our videos. Uh in case you need any help with the feedback form submission just let us know. Okay? Shalini, I hope you'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Bye then. See you next week.